Hello, my name is Jack Ponissi and I'm uh, mainly a keyboards player. However, I've been disassembling things uh, all my life, so I do most of my maintenance work uh, on my keyboards myself. Today I, we're gonna um, fix a problem with a key on uh, my piano. So this is my Kavai KVSP 30. It's a really, really rare piano at this point. I had it uh, for some years and uh, well, I kind of like it. Anyway, today has uh, already happened on several keyboards. I was just playing and uh, well, this key stopped working as it should. <laughs> it only works if I play very hard, but if I play soft, nothing. And today we're gonna disassemble the piano and try to fix this. This happens uh, sometimes uh, because um, there are two contacts under the keyboard and uh, one is for the key itself, uh, the other um, controls the velocity. In this case, um, the velocity part of the contact is probably abstracted by some dirt. So I got my screwdriver and uh, we start removing the screws on the back of the piano. One of the screws is missing, I probably forgot to put it back last time I disassembled this. Actually, I think I just found it a few days ago. Anyway, no big deal, no big deal. Another one. This is usually much easier with uh, two ends. I should probably get some kind of stand for the phone. It's only four screws on, uh, on this particular piano. Now I'm gonna take the top panel and uh, pull it off. I need to pull it forward. Again, this is much easier with two hands. Uh, we'll see. And voila. And there we go. Now, if I close the, the lid, I have access to the main parts of the piano. As you can see, we have speakers, one and two. Uh, this is the main board of the piano. Uh, this is for uh, the connections. Uh, this is, uh, again, I'm not really sure what uh, everything does at this point. <laughs> this, is a, this is actually a floppy drive. And that's it, basically. Anyway, uh, what we really need to do is to get to the keyboard. To do it, we need to remove this, um, this screw, this screw, and this screw. And probably also this one. Also, if I remember correctly, I need to move uh, to remove these screws from the floppy driver i haven't done it in a few years actually anyway these ones because um, we need to pull it back a bit again this is particularly only for this piano yours might be very different but there usually is a way to open a, up a piano to clean the keyboards so yeah if you're not really interested in in this particular model just skip ahead to the point when we'll um, open up the keys themselves. So. Uh, when dismantling something, uh, I always recommend to put some um, little boxes with um, as places to hold the screws. Remember, uh, the screws can be different so it's really important not to um, displace them because sometimes uh, you use one screw which is meant for another place 
and uh, the other one doesn't fit in and that can be a problem and uh, well this is not really a huge problem for um, this kind of instrument but if you're dismantling like phones or something uh, you can really damage the um, data you're dismantling Oof. so here are the four screws and they're gone As you can see, this doesn't move yet because the floppy drive is um, stuck inside. <laughs> it's really pretty funny. Floppy piano, driving a piano in um, 2019. Anyway, this is of course a piano from the 90s. So I'm gonna remove the screws from uh, the floppy driver drive. I hope you don't get sit from my bad camera technique. Anyway. I just uh, leave them there for now. Okay. a bit back and now there this should go free there it goes it's free now now uh, as I don't really need to um, disconnect this one I, I could it's just a small cable here you can just uh, and one under here actually and a few others anyway it's a few cables so you can just plug them out if you want but I don't really need to do this for this kind of uh, operation and just uh, lift it and um, put it over the floppy drive um, okay there we go now uh, we have the main keys here uh, in theory I could just uh, pop out pop out one of the um, springs one of the springs here and uh, actually open the key uh, at least um, I could open some keys from uh, the outside I know that what when this kind of uh, thing uh, th this kind of problem usually happens uh, this is useless because um, the problem is really under the um, K bed and under the um, rubber part that uh, covers the contact so actually popping out the keys from here doesn't um, solve the problem so I won't do it today uh, but uh, I'll show you just in case uh, you need to um, actually to remove the keys on this particular piano you need to move the keyboard back a bit because uh, the front uh, the wood of the front uh, um, interferes with the removal so to do to do it uh, we need to remove as usually a few screws one two three four and five uh, I don't know if I can actually do this when I hold the camera. Uh, probably not. I think uh, just uh, assume I did it. Also, there are a few more screws under the piano. Here they are. One, two, three, four, and five. I think when I remove those, the piano, the keys will be free. This is actually kind of an easy piano to disassemble, I guess. I've had um, much more trouble with uh, other instruments. Uh, I was saying it was it's much easier because, um, well, first of all, you just need one kind of a screwdriver for uh, almost everything, maybe also actually everything. 
and uh, everything um, is uh, set up uh, with a lot of space so it's not really a cramped instrument many devices today are um, really cramped inside so it can be very hard to um, disassemble them and especially reassemble them and uh, I would never dream of doing, uh, of doing it with only one end <laughs> but on this piano it's kinda easy I forgot one small screw here Okay. Or not so small actually. Here it we go. So if I pull it now, push it, yeah it moves. Now to take out uh, the key I'll use a smaller screwdriver. And uh, start with the um, white keys because uh, the black keys are under the white keys. Uh, this is, I mean, this is usually the same on every keyboard. Every keyboard I disassemble is the same. And start from uh, here. Uh, let's see if I can show you. From the this part, this part. And just pull it, pull it. And be careful because the spring might jump out. And there it is. Just put it somewhere safe. So now this um, this key is um, just falling, it doesn't stay in place, and uh, I'll just um, take it from the end, push it, and there it goes out. Here is the, the full key. Uh, it's kind of dirt, a, a bit dirt here, I'll clean it eventually. Uh, here inside uh, we have... Um, well, uh, this is a particular piano because, uh, as uh, you can see, this is. Um, uh, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, this thing, this is the rubber part that covers the contact. However, in uh, many keyboards today, you don't get this metal part that covers the board. You ju it just usually you see the board be beneath it. Uh, in this case, there is. Um, metal lid that covers everything i guess uh, it should provide provide some more protection from um, dust uh, it didn't really help in this case but uh, it's here uh, as i said i won't be disassembling the other keys if i wanted i could now remove this uh, g key a note that usually you get the um, the actual um, key themselves on the back the part that's usually covered and uh, yeah, this is the top one, you can see. They may be different uh, depending on the model, but you usually have them. Um, some details may be different, but this is usually the way. Anyway, I was removing the everything. If I wanted, I could remove the G key the, um, and then get to the F sharp key. Uh, but I know that the problem is not here today, so I won't do it. So I just put it back now. To put it back, uh, we start from uh, the front of the key that goes under the board and then the back and uh, oh yeah yeah this is there we go now it's back in uh, its usual place and uh, all i need is to put back the um, the spring uh, here and i really ah i'll just use the screwdriver to help myself one, stretch it and goes under. Ah, uh, yes. And it's back. So now we're going to disconnect the keyboard, which is connected uh, down uh, below here. Um, you just need to pull it, and there we go. This is disconnected now. Now we can uh, lift the keyboard. As you can see, it's uh, totally free, and uh, we place it on a table. Here it is. Uh, I don't really want to um, cut uh, this uh, fastener at this point, so I'm going to disconnect uh, this cable here, which is the one that uh, goes uh, fr from the cable to the board. I need one. And um, here is the piano without the keyboard. <laughs> 
it's actually not that uh, dirty inside um, this is because I cleaned it um, a few years ago and uh, it's pretty much sealed up once it's closed and here we have the um, those are for the um, headphones and uh, this is just the um, it's the front light, uh, this becomes red when it's an operation. As you can see, it's pretty old, my piano. It has a few, um, well, um, the wood, uh, the, the front, um, the part of the wood uh, came out in over the years. Uh, I think this was already when I bought it a few years ago. So I'll clean it inside anyway, and uh, then we'll operate on the keyboard. Here it is, the keyboard. This is actually um, pretty heavy. It's really, really heavy because, um, well, it's old and they kind of used a lot of material they would never use today such as uh, wood and a lot of uh, metal frames uh, but the basic um, basic build of the thing is still the same it's just with less material because uh, it's cheaper i guess um, this is again from the early 90s uh, what you see here well uh, those are um, actually the the bottom part of uh, the keys and this is the board. Uh, it's it will probably be green on yours if it's uh, new, newer, but it's still the same old thing. I just disassembled a fatal board a few days ago, and it was really the same thing. Uh, to get to this, uh, we'll need to first uh, remove those um, um, metal parts here. Start from here. Uh, I may. I actually don't need to remove the wood part. I think. I think that once I remove this um, this screw here, it will just get out uh, a bit more. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Much better. So I'll just do exactly the same for the next uh, well, my other one, two, three, four, five, uh, whatever. I'll just remove uh, all of them. Actually, I just removed those on this side because um, it's just this half of the board that has problems. The other half is uh, kind of fine, so I leave those in place. So I just re need to remove this fourth one. I removed the four metal uh, coverings and now we have the board itself. Um, as you can see, they are usually linked together. You usually have two of those linked together. We're gonna need to... Um, uh, actually, I think I leave them for now. Um, then we have a few more screws that um, hold the board in place. Like those ones. And um, you can already see these, um, these little uh, rubber things which are part of the rubber coverings that are over the contacts. Um, those will, um, will be important later. Now, I'm gonna remove those um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, screws remaining, and then we'll actually get to see the board. As you can notice, uh, I just used um, one screwdriver for the whole thing, apart from um, the small one that I used to disassemble the key themselves, which is really great on this model because I don't need to use many of those. Uh, when putting this back together, be careful to um, screw them just enough because uh, if you screw them too tight, you may actually crack the board. And this is not something you want to do, especially if it is a piano like this, which is... Uh, well, I think I could never get um, replacement parts in 2019. If it's just a um, fatter board, you can find those on eBay. <laughs> those are kind of nice screws, actually. Nice color, I don't know if it can be seen on, uh, on video. Yeah, probably not. It's kind of iridescent or something. And there is the last one. Now, you can just pull the board and it will come out. 
be careful because this is still linked. Okay, there we go. So uh, this is uh, the board itself. This is actually where uh, the magic happens because uh, those uh, smaller rubber things get uh, keyed by the bottom of a key, goes down, and um, they have um, a, a contact on the one side and another uh, contact, actually more than one, because uh, you need at least, I think, two for um, velocity. And uh, when the contact uh, closes, uh, um, the circuit closes and uh, the board uh, reads, reads it as um, a note. And so this is uh, what happens. Uh, on this particular board, um, I usually have, um, you also have these, uh, these holes I mentioned before, which actually make things worse for um, reassembling because what happens usually is that um, the end part of the contact go, gets uh, cramped by the border and then the key doesn't work. So one need to be very careful in uh, reassembling it. On other keyboards, uh, you don't have this, uh, so it's not really a problem. So uh, first thing uh, I need to understand uh, which uh, of this uh, as uh, the problem at the moment. Um, I need to see which, uh, where is the F sharp. Let's see. I've located the um, problematic F sharp key and there's this one. So I'm just going uh, to count the keys themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, twenty-one. 12, 13, 21. So 21 from this side. So I'm just going to count uh, to 21. As I already were thinking, it's uh, one of the of the contacts uh, between the boards, the rubber boards, because uh, those are the most exposed ones and uh, they're usually the ones that uh, get dirt first. Uh, it's actually kind of good because uh, they're actually easier to remove. So you can just not plug them, pull them. Um, those small rubber things on the back are the actually fasteners are they are. This is a small fastener on the back. And there is the contact on the side. Uh, ooh, yeah. There is actually a very evident uh, a small white thing. Yeah, uh, you should be as able to see it here. That small thing is not really part of the um, contact. Let's see to pull them out, pull it out. Uh, um, Never touch the contacts because the liquid on uh, your end can uh, be problematic after. So, yeah, I just blowed on it and uh, it's uh, gone. I think that now when I put everything back together, everything will work fine. I was lucky this time because the problem was really obvious. Sometimes um, it's not uh, so and you need to clean the contacts. I usually use uh, Q-tips and uh, if needed, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, another option is a contact cleaner. I never had to use that, but uh, it may happen. Whatever you do, be very careful, very um, gentle on the contact and never touch them with your fingers. Um, first, we need to put the fastener back inside. In this case, uh, there was only one that I removed. In other cases, you might need to remove more, but it's the same thing. What I usually use is um, put it um, back where it should be. Uh, if I can, there is, uh, there may be one, um, one more on the other side, but it's not uh, true in this case, but on yours there may be. And then I use the back of a pen to push it until it goes back. There it is. Now it's back. And uh, if you look uh, from um, the other side of the board, you will see that they are all the same. They're all uh, pretty much very deep inside. Now, uh, I'm just going to put back everything together. It's basically the opposite as before. And then test if the key is fixed. 
I really needed two hands to put this board back in its place because, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the holes on the metal covering make it uh, really easy to squeeze the um, rubber coverings. And of course, uh, if you do that, uh, the key won't work. Screw them, screw them just enough, and um, but not too much because otherwise you might create problems on the board. And uh, as always, when uh, you um, screw things back, do a first, uh, a first uh, passage, which is uh, not uh, too tight, and then uh, you can tighten everything later. This way you um, have everything already in place when you go back to tighten them. And, um, you don't risk misaligning the board. Also, uh, this board is uh, linear, so it's not really that important. But uh, if it were something which uh, you had um, screws on the side, I would recommend uh, doing like um, one ear, one on the other side, uh, one ear, one on the other side, and so on. This way, again, uh, you distribute the, um, the screws and uh, don't risk disaligning the board. All the screws are back in their places and now I need to put back the metal um, coverings. Yeah, uh, actually I think these are um, also for, um, well, if you play really hard, you could um, be very heavy on the board itself. So with this, uh, you, um, the piano prevents, from, um, prevents the board from uh, bending which I guess over the years, the years uh, it may be problematic. And uh, I think, I mean, this piano is really old and they used to over uh, engineer these, these things. And uh, this is pretty great because, uh, I mean, uh, after all these years, it works mostly fine. Putting those uh, metal rods back together was actually the hardest part so far because uh, some of um, the screws uh, were really hard to align. Anyway, now I'm going to take the keyboard, put it back in the piano and see if everything works. Everything should be now, but let's see. Here it is. Um, now I need to reconnect this, which is uh, what actually brings the data from the board to the piano itself. And now I'll turn the board over. Then there is the um, other connector, the other side of the connector from um, the side of the board. Here we go. Now, let's power up this old piano. <laughs> it's really hard, so there are only two connectors that I need to replace at the moment, which is great. Power. And let's power it up. And let's test it. Okay, let's see. And the key now works perfectly. Yeah, that was it. It was all uh, only that small uh, white thing. I'll just uh, quickly test uh, if every key works, just in case. Well, from this side, nothing should be changed because I didn't actually remove the board. side that I did the change. Better to test uh, the keyboard twice because uh, the contacts have uh, two parts and one uh, closest um, immediately and the other uh, is for velocity. Uh, so you test once uh, playing uh, hard and one uh, playing soft. Everything works, which is great. It took uh, one hour, but I was, of course, uh, doing the video. <laughs> and now all I need to do is to put everything back and uh, put the screw back, and then uh, it will be fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, found it useful. Personally, I found out that you can't really do these things well with only one hand. If you did enjoy it, uh, well, uh, you're on YouTube, you know what to do. Till next time.